In this video we're going to look at low resolution nuclear magnetic resonance. So by the end of this lecture you should be able to explain the theoretical basis of NMR, recall the substance used as a standard in NMR and draw and analyse low resolution proton NMR. So we're going to continue talking about the, exter the experimental determination of structure. So we've done elemental analysis from which we get empirical formula. Then from mass spectrometry we can change that empirical formula into a molecular formula and get some structural information. And then from the IR spectroscopy we get more structural information particularly with regard to functional groups like C double bond O's, OH's etc. Finally, we're going to look at nuclear magnetic resonance or NMR. Now, as before, before we look at the actual spectra we get from NMR, we need to just have a superficial understanding of how the data is acquired. And in this case, it uh, relies on the fact that the nucleus of hydrogen atoms can absorb radio waves. So, under certain circumstances, the hydrogen nucleus will act like a very small magnet and absorb radio waves. So we're just measuring the absorption of radio waves by the hydrogen atoms. So from NMR spectra, we're going to get information about the environment that the hydrogen atom is in. We have low resolution NMR or high resolution NMR. In this lecture, we're going to focus on the low resolution NMR. So let's start by looking at a few NMR spectra. This is the NMR spectra for ethanol. So when we look at spectra we see there's three peaks. Now what each peak represents is a different environment in which hydrogen atoms are present in this molecule. So the peak position or the chemical shift I'll come back and explain that in a bit more detail in a few minutes, is related to the environment of the hydrogen atom. So if we look at the ethanol molecule, these three hydrogen atoms on the end carbon are all in the exact same environment. They're all attached to a carbon, which is attached to two other hydrogens and a CH2 group. So all those hydrogens are in the same environment. However, these hydrogens here are in a different environment because the hydrogen, the carbon they're attached to, is not attached to two other hydrogens. So these two hydrogen atoms are in the same environment but it's different from this environment. And then this hydrogen atom here is in a different environment yet again. So there's three different environments and that's why there's three peaks. Just to come back to the scale along here, this delta, which uh, represents the chemical shift. If this scale is extended back to the zero, and sometimes in some spectra it will be, in some spectra it won't, you always get a peak at the zero. Now this peak is due to a reference sample which is always run alongside your unknown and the reference sample is TMS which stands for tetramethylsilane. So it's a silicon atom with four methyl groups attached. All 12 of those hydrogen atoms are in the exact same environment. They absorb radio waves and the wavelength at which the standard absorbs radio waves is defined as the zero. And all the other radio waves absorptions are measured relative to that zero. Okay, so what's the relationship between the, where the peak arises and the hydrogen environment? To do that, we need to look at our data booklet. And on page 16 of your data booklet, 
you'll find the proton NMR spectra correlation chart. Now, I'm sure this looks quite small on the screen you're using, so perhaps it's a good idea to dig out your proper data booklet and look at page 16. It's always worth noting the little note they have here. It says the approximate chemical shift values of hydrogen atoms in different structural environments relative to tetramethylsilane TMS for which delta is zero. So sometimes they actually ask you what standard does you use in the NMR. It's given here in your data booklet. Okay, so here are all the different environments you can find hydrogen atoms in. And these black bars represent where abouts in the spectra you're likely to find the peak. Some are quite narrow, some are quite large, which can be a bit of a pain sometimes. So let's go back to our ethanol example. Okay. Right, these three hydrogens here, okay, so they are all attached to a CH2, which is attached to an oxygen. So I have to say, my uh, initial reaction would be to try and find something down here, which goes CH3, CH2, O. But if you search up and down here, you'll find that doesn't actually exist. And this OH group on the neighbouring carbon uh, does not have any great influence on this CH3 group. So in fact, the, the one that you're looking for is just a CH3 group attached to an alkyl group. So it's just RCH3, which is up there. And that gives a peak in the 0 0.9 to 1.5 region. So those hydrogens are responsible for this peak here. These two hydrogens here, well, you've got the CH2 group, an alkyl group here, and an oxygen here. And that exact grouping is given here, RCH2O, and that should give rise to a peak between 3.9 and 3.5. So they're responsible for that peak there. And then finally, the H on that OH group. So that's uh, an ROH group as opposed to an aromatic OH group. So the ROH group, well, it's quite a broad range where they say this peak might be found in between one and five. But having identified the two other peaks, we know that this must be responsible for this peak here. So it's not always really straightforward, but by carefully searching up and down here, you can usually find the chemical shift for the peak that you're looking for. So there's a wee bit more information we can get from the NMR spectra. And that's by looking at the size of these peaks. The size of the peaks indicate how many hydrogen atoms are in each peak. Now, you may be tempted to think you can just do it by height, but sometimes peaks are broader than other, some peaks are broader than other peaks. So in fact, the best way to do it is by looking at the area of each peak. And this is done usually by the software of the NMR instrument by integrating the area under each peak. So by integrating the area under the peak, we can find out the relative number of hydrogen atoms in each environment. There's two ways you might be given this information. The first way is by this integration curve. And if you come across a question like this, what you have to do is measure the vertical height from that line to that line. And that gives you the relative area of this peak here. Then the vertical height from there to there. Okay. 
and then the vertical height from there to there. So you just get a ruler, measure each one, and if I do that, I get approximately here. That distance there is two centimeters. This des distance here is 3.9 centimeters, and this distance here is 6.1 centimeters. So then, a bit like empirical formula, you pick the smallest number and divide all the numbers by that. So, two centimeters divided by two, that was going to give us one. 3.9 divided by two, well, if it was four, you get exactly two. When you're measuring it with a ruler, there's always going to be small errors in your measurement, so it's going to be so close to two that it's fair enough just to round it up to two. And 6.1 divided by 2 is more or less 3. So that tells us there's one hydrogen atom in this environment. No, sorry, it doesn't. It tells us the relative number of hydrogen atoms are 1 to 2 to 3. The actual number might be 1 to 2 to 3, or it might be 2 to 4 to 6. This was our ethanol example, and in fact, in this case, the absolute numbers of hydrogen atoms are. The one hydrogen atom there, the two hydrogen atoms there, and those three hydrogen atoms there. Right, another way you might be presented with that same information is through a table. Instead of doing that little line drawn on the graph, it might give you a table in which you are presented with the area under each peak. So once again, you just divide through by the smallest number and you can round, you know, if it's about 1.5, you wouldn't round it up to 2. But if it's, you know, 1.9, you'd round that up to 2. So that gives us 1 to 2 to 3, as before. So that's two different ways you might be presented with that information. So a very powerful tool, low-resolution NMR, it gives us information about the environment of all the hydrogen atoms in your organic molecule and it tells us or allows us to work out how many hydrogen atoms are in each environment. The other thing you sometimes have are asked to do is to draw or sketch NMRs, NMR spectra. So why don't you try sketching the low resolution NMR spectra of, of ethoxyethane which is shown here. Okay. Again, I suggest you use your own data booklet and not try and use this part of the screen. Uh, for this first one, I'll give you a clue that there's only two peaks in the spectra. So, why don't you stop the video, try and sketch the spectra, and then I'll run through it. Okay, so there's two peaks in the spectra. So, these three hydrogen atoms are all in the same environment, and they're all in an identical environment to these three hydrogen atoms. So it's a CH3 group attached to our carbon atom, which has got two hydrogens and that oxygen on, on it. And like in the previous example of the ethanol, that is just the RCH3. So that's going to give me a peak round about one. So let's draw a peak round about one. Okay. The second environment. Is these four hydrogen atoms. Again, they're all in an identical environment. So you've got a CH2 attached to an alkyl group and an oxygen, and you'll find that there, okay, which gives you a peak between 3.5 and 3.9. So I'm going to put another peak round about here. It's going to be bigger or smaller than this peak. Well, this has got six hydrogen atoms in it, this one's got four hydrogen atoms in it, so without doing any measurements, just go do it a bit smaller. Okay, so that's a very bad drawing of roughly what the spectra would look like. Two peaks, one about one, one just under four, and the one at one is bigger than the one at four. Okay, let's try one more example. So this is propanol. 
So again, stop the video, see if you can sketch the low resolution NMR spectra of propanol. Okay, so our first peak is just a CH3 group attached to an alkyl group. So it's that one again with a peak round about one. Okay, so peak round about one. Then we've got this CH2 group, which is attached to an alkyl group here. So an alkyl group. CH2 then attached to a C double bond O and you'll find that there which gives a peak between 2 and 2.7 so I'm going to put another peak about here it's got two hydrogen atoms as opposed to three so it's going to be a bit smaller than this one okay so and then finally we've got this hydrogen attached to the carbonyl group and we'll find that down here here you've got the hydrogen atom attached to the carbonyl group and that gives a peak way up about nine and a half to ten it's going to be smaller than these two peaks because there's only one hydrogen atom so we'll just do a small peak down there and that's roughly what the low resolution NMR spectra of propanol is going to look like. So you should be able to interpret spectra and you should be able to sketch low resolution NMR spectra. So by now you should be able to explain the theoretical basis of NMR, recall the substance used as a standard in NMR, draw and analyse low resolution proton NMR.